What's going on, Walker? We were wrong. Radio Man ain't running Dubai. He's just a lackey. You mean? It's Conrad. He did it. All of it. Okay. So what do we do? We play along. For now. Hello, welcome back to Special Ops Line, Chapter 9, The Road. Uh, we're doing FUBAR difficulty, which is the hardest difficulty, and uh, we're doing a bit of an analysis. Um, I now, appreciate being kept waiting. That's Conrad. Um, now, I'm going to ruin a lot of this in this chapter, so if you really want to find out for yourself, uh, time to purchase the game and play it. Other than that, enjoy uh, the story and what we're going to reveal. Um, okay, so Conrad, uh, we believe that Walker here is talking to Conrad. And uh, we're assuming that everyone's hearing the conversation. But yeah, as you just saw by Adam's little um, hint there, what's going on. They're not hearing the same conversation we're doing. Um, so this is the white phosphorus. Uh, this was the agent um, um, 33rd battalion again, uh, who went. Um, uh, they were punished for their insubordination against uh, the 33rd, declaring martial law. Um, and you can see really what the white phosphorus do does, especially this one. Like if you see the jaw. If you remember, I said that the white phosphorus actually collects in the jaw and distorts it and makes the person that's suffering with uh, white phosphorus burns make an ungodly sound. Uh, so this is what actually happens. This is what America and uh, other countries use in their bombs in order to devastate people. And ultimately, it's a lot of just victims, you know, um, that unfortunately go through this. It uh, just burn, keeps burning until it gets to the bone, and uh, it doesn't stop burning. It ignites with oxygen. Uh, so it's a really, really dangerous chemical, and really, I'm surprised they still do it for what it, the, the damage it causes. Now, um... There's two theories as to what's going on with Walker here. Uh, one is that he's dead, and <laughs> another one is that he, he makes it through, he's alive. Um, now, the discrepancy is actually between uh, the writer of the game, the script writer, and the publisher. You see, the script writer's intention with this game is that Walker died. He didn't actually survive the helicopter back at Chapter 1. Um, cr the helicopter crash where the publisher thought that was a bit dismal and made sure that there was a happy ending where uh, Walker actually survived um, and we'll talk about the ending and the profound effects of the ending on the ending because uh, I have a lot to say about the ending um, but if you um, a lot of people choose to uh, believe that Walker actually died in that helicopter crash, but there is some significant uh, evidence to show that he didn't. So if we come over to uh, this board, this board will actually show that everyone that's already died. And do you notice up there, Lu Sergeant Lugo and Lieutenant, is it Lieutenant? I don't know. Um, uh, Adams. Uh, so these two definitely 100% died in that helicopter crash back in chapter 1. But do you notice our name is not there. So we currently have not died. And whether we're in a coma sized situation um, or something along those lines. And you'll see that it just uh, repeats itself. Um, suffering with PTSD, and I want to talk about PTSD and the effects of what it has. Um, now, if you're after some intel, I think the intel was here somewhere uh, from memory, or is it here? I know it, it's in one of these places, 
that the intel is. So PTSD stands for Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Um, and I've studied psychology for a while. And, um, the problem with uh, the label PTSD is is very look. It's really, really a, a complex situation, complex disorder. It basically uh, is referring to um, memory um, from a, a traumatic event that's causing a panic disorder or um, is affecting someone's normal life routine uh, quite dramatically um, is the best way of, uh, I, I think, of putting it. Um, now, uh, people that go through any type of trauma not everyone has post-traumatic stress disorder. Some are able to deal with that trauma um, by themselves uh, very quickly. But uh, if uh, after a month or uh, you know even after a couple of weeks really, um, if it continues to affect the person, then that person is really suffering badly from the trauma they went through. And uh, I myself went through a trauma. I'll uh, just explain it real quickly. Um, I was the first one to a car scene accident. Uh, I didn't cause the car scene accident. I was the first one uh, there to administer first aid. And unfortunately, um, there was a, a woman and a, a young girl in, in the car. And they both stopped breathing at the same time. And uh, the, the fact that they stopped breathing at exactly the same moment... It was just so eerie that uh, I, I just went into shock. I, I didn't know what to do. I was presented with a choice and uh, I, I didn't make any choice. I didn't do anything. Um, on top of that, um, uh, there was another survivor in the other car accident that uh, um, sort of came and she was so traumatized by the car accident herself, she ripped my friend's back open uh, just with her fingernails. And... Uh, the father of the wife in the car suddenly put it upon himself when he saw that his wife died to try and commit suicide and so he was literally running into um, oncoming traffic to try and commit suicide so you can, you can understand everything that was going on I, I just I just stood there I, I didn't do anything and it wasn't the fact that um, uh, it wasn't the fact that it's really hard to explain. Um, at the time, uh, I, w I wasn't... Um, look, the way it affected me is after a couple of weeks, I stopped eating. I, I uh, stopped everything. I pretty much stopped showering, stopped life. Life just wasn't... Um, I was ashamed of myself. And um, the unemployment, I uh, made sure that I went into counselling and counselling really helps. Counselling is still the highest form of youth, um, recovering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, basically, you just need to talk it out with someone. And th that's ma the major help uh, for a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder people. But the problem is, is most people going through that situation don't want to talk about it. Um, in my situation, there was nothing I could do. Uh, it was a no-win situation for... And I, I played that situation so vividly back into my mind over and over again. Uh, but there was, is nothing that I could have done. It doesn't help the fact that... Um, it, the shame part of it is that uh, I never tried at the time to even attempt any of those no-win situations. Um... But as time has progressed, I've been able to, you know, recover from it, and uh, and uh, you know, I you never recover from it fully. Like even now, twenty years later, I can vividly um, play it back in my mind. Um, I can see their faces. I can see what they were wearing. I can see the dust cloud uh, that when their car hit the ground. Um, I can see the screams. I I, I can hear them. Um, I, I can hear the siren, I can hear everything. And I will take that to my grave. It's like I, that memory through adrenaline is uh, played back uh, whenever I want in crisp, uh, high definition. That's how traumatic it was. It just, you know, burns into your mental psyche um, and 
Um, now I can play it, play it back and not have a negative reaction about it. I can play it like a, um, I'm looking at it from a um, background situation. Now the problem here. Now the reason why I bring that up. That's a, that's just a that's a post traumatic for a single car accident. Now rape victims go through the same thing. Um, a, a large percentage of them. I think it's about fifty percent. But with a rape victim, it's a little bit different because, you know, some, a lot of rape victims, they get raped uh, continually. So you imagine a compounding version of um, traumatic events constantly. Um, and, it, you know, they play many situations and it could be aftershave that triggers it or, you know... Um, uh, a turned off light or you know a sudden uh, a, a piece of fabric touching them or so anything minute can trigger the event now war veterans it's the same it's about a one in eight i think war veterans they suffer with post-traumatic stress disorder but with war veterans they're playing it when they go through so many trauma situations they're high on adrenaline they're burning all these memories into them and uh, they they can just flash back and they can have a really really negative consequence uh, they can colorize you can change your uh, post-traumatic memory a little bit try and colorize and do all sorts of things and this is maybe what walker is doing but he you know you imagine this guy's gone through so many traumatic events and he's just playing them back um now the difference is um usually what happens is a large percentage of these war veterans they end up committing suicide they can't handle the post-traumatic stress uh, I think it's uh, 22 a day, something like that, of pe uh, veterans commit suicide. They just can't handle, uh, can't, uh, can't handle what's going on. So that's a bit of an interesting uh, situation um, about post-traumatic stress. And what is that? I've never heard that, actually. Um, and uh, Symposium for Nature. Oh, okay. August the 20th. They're celebrating nature and green. Awesome. How ironic is that? Beautiful. Wow. Solutions by Dr. Raya T. Moha. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and the, the, this post-traumatic stress disorder is going to come uh, back and haunt us in the last chapter. I'll also talk about the post-traumatic stress disorder of my father and what happened to him. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting story. Alright, um, so what we're going to do is we're not actually going to eventually get into battle on this one. Uh, there's still too, a lot to talk about. Um, so we'll just shift down here. thought you said you knew him. thought I did. Apparently there's something in that reflection if you... When I served under him in Kabul, he was an honorable man. Because I saved your life? I've saved many lives, Captain. I've ended even more. Okay, so remember back in Chapter 1 again here, yeah, um, uh, he, he was forever thankful that uh, Conrad had pulled him from an evac chapter, uh, chopper and saved his life uh, and to him to walker conrad was a hero now you hear this guy saying well i've saved many people and i've actually killed as many people as well so you know how does that make me a hero and here you've got this conversation interesting about what a hero is going between walker and conrad continually now this next part is a little bit of a um, red herring about what's going to go on. Actually, I haven't really looked ever around here. I'm in a gymnasium. Cool. Passports, photos, luggage. Okay. Um. Sometimes I just like to have a good look around, just in case. There's sometimes uh, interesting clues. Okay, we're going to soon be presented with a choice here. You can see it from here. 
you can see those two bodies over there and at first glance it's going to look like that there's one of two choices one you kill one guy or you kill the other uh, there's actually somewhere around 15 choices you can make uh, so yes you can kill one uh, the guy on the left or you can kill the guy on the right you can also choose not to kill him you can just stand there if you want you will eventually get shot by the sniper yourself uh, you can run past them you can run all the way and try and outrun the snipers unfortunately that won't happen uh, you can shoot the rope to one of them and kill the other or you can sh shoot the rope to the other guy and kill the other um, unfortunately that doesn't work either uh, um, so you can try and shoot both ropes and uh, free both people unfortunately the snipers will take them both out and you haven't really solved anyone e either uh, what else can you do you can kill both of them and uh, he'll basically say you're sick <laughs> Uh, you can kill the guy on the left here, and the guy will say, Conrad will say, well, that's not actually the choice I would do. And we're going to actually do what the game suggests that we do, and that's shoot the guy on the right. And we'll explain why uh, that's the choice of the game, and why he wants us to do that. Um, so let, let's go uh, to that now. Um, I'm sure there's other decisions. Oh, you can try and shoot the snipers y yourself. Um, it still won't work. The snipers will um, kill. So that, that's another suggestion, uh, a thing you can do. So there's a lot of options you can do, but ultimately they all end up the same way. Someone dies. Um, so again, because I can't really do anything about that, I'm going to do what the game tells me to do. Snipers. Tell your men not to worry, Captain. The snipers aren't for you. What the fuck is this? This is Dubai, Captain. This is what I face every day. My duty is to maintain order. Without it, we would have died long ago. This is a test. Yes, it is. The civilian on the right stole water. The capital defense. The soldier on the left was sent to apprehend him. Which he did, killing the man's family in the process. Five innocent people are dead because these two animals couldn't control themselves. I get it. We're meant to choose. Choose what? Let's get out of here. Lugo's right. We need to get as far away from this as possible. That's enough. Obviously not, because we're still here. They are guilty. But what is justice? Yeah, let's just get out of here. Go where? They have us surrounded. Chosen like a true commander. Loyalty over lawlessness. Very wise. I just hope you've taught him something about following orders today, Captain. And that's the appreciate your service, Captain. And that's the choice. Let's get the hell out of here. The choice that was to be mine. Is there something on your mind, Lieutenant? Yeah. I don't like it any more than you, but they had us surrounded. We don't do this shit. Look, I did what was necessary. I kept us alive. Now, I don't want to hear another word about it. You got that? Yeah. Now, we assume that these two had the same decision, and this is where it's a bit of a red herring. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't, which doesn't make much sense. You know, why would you just suddenly kill one or the other when presented with that? Um, but that was, that was the situation, apparently. Um... And we just worked all that out by ourselves. Um, now, the reason why they want this one killed is because this one broke the law and put everyone in danger by stealing water. And this guy, ultimately, was doing his job. He just was a bit gung ho. And by it's all over uh, killing this guy, uh, if we killed this guy instead, um, this guy would have been free. But he could have come back and you know 
uh, try to become a, uh, a, a even bigger enemy. So by killing this guy, this guy's not going to become an enemy against uh, anyone, and uh, he's it was the wiser uh, wiser decision to make, um, according to Captain Conrad. So that that's a little bit of what's going on there. Um, now uh, we'll actually pause it. Uh, here because it is going to go into a heated battle. I'll just run and trigger the heated battle so I can uh, Do it next time, but as you can see it is getting a uh, very interesting uh, with all these uh, issues at it Oh, and by the way if you want to see a interesting documentary um, There's a YouTuber called Empire Files, I think and there's one about uh, US and US Army and the lab rats Showing how uh, often soldiers are used as lab rats um, in like chemical warfare. They've been put into uh, danger on purpose uh, uh, to see the effects of radiation to, to dangerous chemicals and so forth. Uh, so if you're ever thinking of going off into war and fighting for your country, you might want to check that, uh, that uh, documentary out before you do. Um, so let's get started anyway and by no means do I condone violence or anything along these lines uh, this game doesn't make me want to condone violence uh, or anything like that I'm gonna go anyway, I'll see you there and I'll join you next time. Bye for now.